Do you like horror movies? I mean, I sure do, but there are a couple that leave me with a disturbed and upsetting feeling after watching them. Hello, curious people, I'm V, and today we're gonna be jumping into the top five disturbing horror movies that should have never been released. Number five, Fresh. I decided to start this list off light, so obviously a movie about a human meat business. Fresh. The movie opens up to Noah on a date with a seriously insufferable man, like this, like the thin scarf and everything. Noah later meets a guy at a grocery store, Steve, and they hit it off immediately. Ironically, there's actually a fresh meat sign hanging right over the scene, which, you know, it's not funny, but it kind of is. Anyway, the two end up going on a date where the pair get to know about each other. Family, friends, connections, people who would go searching for her, you know. Date topics. The pair strike up a fast and intense romance, and in just a couple of days, Steve invites Noah on a vacation to a surprise location. Noah hesitantly agrees, and they leave. Noah only tells her close friend that she's going, but Noah doesn't even have an address to give her because hey, it's a surprise. Steve and Noah drive for hours. Noah notices how far they're going, but doesn't mention any discomfort. In fact, she even gets an address to where they're going, which she tells her friend. Steve tells her that they're going to stop at his house for the night and finish the drive in the morning. They arrive at Steve's desolate modern house where Steve pours Noah a drink. Noah asks for the Wi-Fi, saying there's still no service, and Steve Steve answers, it must have gone out again. Um, what? That wasn't the question, sir. He asks Noah to guess the flavors of her drink, which we all know is to get her to drink more of the spiked drink, and she ends up passing out. She wakes up in a large room, chained to a bed on the floor. Steve explains to her that his job is to kidnap women, do surgery on them to remove pieces of their flesh, and then to sell the meat to paying customers. Obviously, the lives of the women are then ended and they slowly dwindle away into nothingness. Noah is able to speak to another woman that is there and discusses how long they've been there. But it's also revealed that Steve has an affinity for Noah, much like another woman who had written secret notes in magazines provided by Steve. Steve takes her out of her room for specially prepared meals which contained, you guessed it, human flesh. Back in the city, Noah's friend begins investigating her disappearance, eventually stumbling upon Steve's home in the city. There it is found out that he has a wife, who's missing a leg, who helps him with the business. Noah is able to build trust between her and Steve, and eventually he lets his guard down enough for her to make a move towards escaping. She ends up biting off his you know, before running out onto the property. Noah's friend is able to find the house and Steve's wife begins to hunt Noah down, but is unsuccessful. Steve and his wife end up passing and Noah frees herself and the other girl there. God, I'm never going on a first date again. <laughs> Number four, Climax. This is by far one of the strangest, yet most captivating movies I have ever had the pleasure to watch. It follows a dance group in France who are having a rehearsal and party before a performance. But about 30 minutes into the movie, everyone begins acting strange, and it's revealed that somebody spiked the punch with LSD. The movie opens with a myriad of interviews, introducing many, many characters and their reason for dancing. Then the movie shows the rehearsal and party, and then people started to realize that they were all acting weird, like tripping weird. I mean, people reacted as expected. Some people attempted to leave, only to find out the doors were locked. Some people began to have fun while others were freaking out. Chaos seriously ensues. People are crying and screaming amidst others who were dancing and enjoying their time profusely. One girl is set on fire. A young person whose mother danced there locked themselves in a bathroom and got electrocuted. Relationships began and ended while others began to sleep with each other. Even, um, I'm not gonna say it directly, but a brother and a sister were in this movie. The group begins to turn on each other, accusing people of spiking the punch, but no one is ever able to come to a conclusion. You know, their attention spans aren't very long. The movie continues to pan around the building, showing the interactions everyone is having with themselves, the people around them, and the new hidden world that only they can see. Eventually, the group came down and saw that it was morning. They also found the previously locked door unlocked. The entire film is filled to the brim with amazing camera shots, acting, and dance sequences. It is truly a piece of artwork. Disturbing artwork, but artwork. The film's very last scene is a girl dropping liquid LSD into her eye. I'm not gonna tell you who it is because the mystery of not knowing who it is creates such amazing suspense as you watch the movie. Number three, Troll 2. Okay, 
I couldn't help myself. I had to add this movie in. Although it's not disturbing in the traditional horror sense, the acting, effects, and dialogue are surely enough to leave a viewer unsettled and confused. It has time control, teleportation, magic, an erotic popcorn scene, and as my mother put it, the whole movie seems as though it was directed by a five-year-old and written by a four-year-old. Troll 2 was made in 1990, but it seems like it was made in the 60s. I have never watched a horror movie that elicited such frustration, yet amazement into my very core. The movie follows a family who decide to take an exchange vacation to Nilbog, a small desolate town. Upon arriving, the family realizes that its residents aren't what they first seemed to be. Yes, they did seem to be inhuman to the viewer, but somehow the family was blissfully unaware. The son, Joshua, keeps seeing his recently deceased grandfather father, who everybody constantly calls Grandpa Seth. Yes, everyone. Grandpa Seth loves to tell Joshua stories of goblins. The sister, I honestly don't remember her name, is in a, I don't know if I can call it a relationship, with a boy. She's upset that the boy has friends, and she also mentions that her family hates him. But two seconds later, she invites him to go on their vacation, saying that her family would be fine with it. I know, it doesn't make sense. The boyfriend decides to take an RV with all of his friends to Nilbog, meeting the family there. In the car, a weird dream sequence occurs. Josh sees Grandpa Seth on the side of the road, and for some reason, his parents stop the car and allow him to run up to the man. It is then revealed that the man is just a random, decrepit man, and only Joshua saw him as Grandpa Seth, and the family gently ask him to return to the car. No sense of concern whatsoever for their young child who is running up to a strange man on the side of the highway. Upon arriving in Nilbog, the family is greeted by the owners of the house they will be staying in and oh my god. I don't even know how to explain the interaction besides, no, no, I actually have no words. They enter the house and there is a feast laid out for them, but Joshua's grandpa Seth appears outside a window and tells him that he can't let his family eat the food, which is covered in a green oozing liquid. So grandpa Seth freezes time and Joshua comes up with a great idea to stop his family from eating the food. He pees on the table, yes. That was actually the only thing he could come up with to prevent his family from eating. While he was frozen in time, peeing on the table. And no, nobody questions how he seemingly teleported from the window to standing on top of the table. Instead, they lock him in his room. It turns out that the people in the town are actually all goblins. And guys, Nilbog is goblin backwards. What? They're trying to turn humans into plants so that they can eat them. The entire movie is just filled with the town residents trying to get the families to eat. Also, Grandpa Seth dies like five times in the movie and then he just keeps coming back. He also goes to hell for a second. The boy's friends turn into trees from the Goblin Queen and there's a lot of scenes with people flailing at a slightly increased speed in one direction. Some may try to call it running, but no. These people were not running. I'm not sure what they were doing. The goblins also looked like they were played by slow moving children. In fact, the costumes also looked like they were made by children. You know what? The whole movie seems to have been made by children and not impressive film prodigy children, like preschool children who are progressing as they're supposed to. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. I honestly could do a whole video on this, but I'm aware that we're not talking about horribly fantastic horror movies today, so I'll get back to the list. I really beg of you to please watch Troll 2. No, there is zero storyline connection to Troll. And in fact, there actually aren't any trolls in the movie, but please watch it because I could easily do an entire video just talking about Troll 2 and I would love for you guys to really understand what I'm talking about. Number two, Flowers in the Attic. Okay, so I haven't actually watched this movie, but I have read the book. And the fact that it was made into a movie is upsetting to say the least. This movie includes the imprisonment of young siblings for years and eventually leads to, um, a twisted attraction forming. The plot begins with a family's father passing away in a car accident. After a couple of weeks, the mother tells her four children that they will be moving in with her very rich, but estranged parents, and that they would be leaving immediately with only four suitcases. Upon arrival, the children are greeted by their grandmother, who is a tall, sophisticated, and stern looking woman. She leads them in through a darkened back entrance up to a small room. The mother tells the group of children that they will be staying in the room until their grandfather forgives her for marrying her half uncle. Yes, I'm glazing over that, but once she and her father make amends, she will introduce all of the children and they will live lavishly in the grand mansion forever. The children were required to stay quiet, but they were able to play in the large attic that was attached to the room, and they would be brought food once a day. But things aren't as they seem. The group would end up staying in the attic for over three years. The oldest two, Chris and Kathy, took care of their younger siblings and attempted to bring joy and learning into their imprisonment. They would decorate the attic. Chris and Kathy's relationship developed into, 
I'm not gonna say it, but I'm sure you can figure out what I'm not saying. Chris and Kathy first left the room with permission from their mother to watch a lavish holiday party that was taking place at the mansion. The next time they left the room was three years later when they scaled down the side of the house and swam in a nearby pond. After years of their mother lying to them, they found out that her father had passed away years before, but wouldn't let them out of the room because of a clause in the inheritance she had received from her father. If it was revealed that she'd birthed children from her late husband, she would have to forfeit all of her money. Honestly, I'm kind of siding with the grandfather on this one. So when the group figures that their mother never plans to release them, they decide to escape. In preparation for their escape, Chris and Kathy created a copy of a key left in the room at night to steal money from their mother. Most of the children do manage to escape, and this leads into the eight book series, yes, there are eight of these books. I would love to say that I wouldn't recommend them, but the writing is actually really good. Number one, Human Centipede. Yeah, I know everyone is expecting Human Centipede, but that's just because it's Human Centipede. It's so upsetting, it's so disgusting. I don't even wanna talk about it. You know what? No, I refuse. I'm changing my mind. I'm not gonna talk about it. And honestly, I don't even think I can on this channel. Number 1.5, Creep. Yeah, this movie is disturbing. Never have I ever watched a movie that left me with such a disgusted, sinking feeling. Creep follows an amateur filmmaker, Aaron, who was hired to film a documentary for a man who was dying of a terminal illness and wanted to leave something behind for his son. Aaron drove out to a secluded house in the woods to meet Joseph, the man, and Joseph starts off his documentary strong. He asks Aaron to film him in the bathtub, scrub-a-dubbing and speaking of how sad he is that he will never meet his son. Then Aaron is scared by a realistic wolf mask with Joseph tells him is named Peach Fuzz. Yes, Aaron stays. Then the pair go on a walk through the woods alone and Joseph keeps sneaking up and scaring Aaron. But it kind of seems like Aaron is warming up to Joseph. Joseph claims he just has a weird sense of humor. The two go to a diner and share a dinner that quickly turns very strange. Yes, even stranger. Joseph confesses that he had taken photos of Aaron before they had met and that he had an animal within who is ready to kill. Back at the house, Aaron is ready to leave, but Joseph asks him to stay for a drink. And yeah, Aaron ends up staying. I know, I know. Do have a drink and Joseph shares some incredibly disturbing information with Aaron regarding his peach fuzz mask and his wife. Aaron puts something in Joseph's drink, takes his phone, and decides to call Joseph's wife in a hiding spot. Aaron is told that she is not his wife, she's his sister, and that Joseph does not have a terminal illness, and he doesn't have a son. She warns him to leave immediately. Freaked out, Aaron headed to leave, but when he exited his hiding place, Joseph was nowhere to be seen. Aaron, for some reason, looks around the house, like on the patio, then Joseph sneaks up and scares Aaron, then says that he doesn't want to die before running off. Aaron walks down the stairs to leave and finds Joseph wearing his peach fuzz mask and like, gyrating against the door. <laughs> Aaron charges towards him and then the camera cuts. We next see Aaron back at home complaining about receiving mailed gifts and videos from Joseph. Joseph sent Aaron a video of him burying large garbage bags in his yard. He sent a box containing a stuffed bear and a blade or a stuffed wolf and a blade and finally another video of Joseph apologizing for the first video. Aaron ripped open the wolf and he found a locket with both of their pictures inside of it. He throws everything away. The police provide no help or surveillance. One night, Aaron hears something, someone rummaging through the trash and the viewers see Joseph standing at the front door. Another night, Joseph sneaks into Aaron's house and films Aaron while he sleeps. Soon after, Aaron finds another video of Joseph where Joseph explains how he found the locket in the garbage and how he wants Aaron to meet him by the lake for closure. You're probably thinking, of course Aaron won't go. No, he goes. He sets up his camera on and sits on a bench facing the water. Then, in his peach fuzz mask, Joseph comes up behind Aaron and ends his life with an ax. The movie closes with Joseph placing a tape labeled Aaron with a little heart on a shelf full of tapes just like it. He's heard on the phone introducing himself as Bill, requesting the exact same services that he had requested from Aaron. And yes, there is a creep too. Thankfully, that brings us to the end of today's video. Have you ever seen any of these movies? Let me know in the comments, but don't DM me. If you're watching these movies, you're too much like me and I don't need more of that energy in my life. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, but most importantly, I hope you learned something. See you next time and remember to stay curious. Thank you.